for Mike Time. Defensive end Jeremy Mincy just completed his eighth NFL season, his second with the Dallas Cowboys, uh, the pride of Statesboro, Georgia, University of Florida. Mr. Mintz with us here tonight to talk about uh, the current playoffs just a little bit in a minute. But, but, but first, we'll talk about the, uh, the Cowboys season just gone by. How you doing? Great, man. Great, great. Uh, excited about what the future holds. You know, you said that, that you want to return to the Cowboys. You're, you obviously become a free agent soon. Do you, you think it'll happen? Will you be back in Dallas? Well, probably a 50-50 chance. I mean, I hopefully want to return for the fans. I want to return. But, I mean, uh, you know, they are going younger, so I don't, I don't really know the whole grand scheme. But hopefully I'm in the plan. Uh, six sacks in 2014, no sacks this past year. You played through some physical problems. How much do you think you have left at, at the age of 32? Well, I, I have I have a couple of really, really good years, but just a couple, <laughs> you know. Um, um, I'm, I, I'm very hungry right now, and, and, and I'm very focused. I mean, with us losing, like, uh, the playoff contention spot and Yaggy Smackley, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what it did to me, but it, 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 it grew up. Uh, it grew a seed in me, man, and, and, and it made me extremely hungry. So well. the fire's hotter than it's ever been right now, is yeah, what you're telling me. Yes. You've said, you've gone on record as saying that you didn't think this team was mentally tough enough. Uh, whose fault is that, in your opinion? Um, I mean, it's just it's a collective effort. I mean, when you're not on the same page, uh, the results show, and that's what happened. We, uh, the results showed on Sundays, and we just couldn't get it done. What leads you to believe, though, that that mental toughness wasn't there? What did you see that, that leads you to make a statement like that? I mean, those close games we had, we had guys, I mean, we showed the world we clearly can get in position to win, but you got to have killer instinct when you're in position to win and go ahead and, you know, uh, execute and get it over with. Talk about the leadership of this team a little bit, and I realize you're a guy who's hoping to come back, so there's probably only so much you, you want to say or are willing to say, but is Jason Garrett the right guy in the right position at the right time to, to lead this football team? Honestly, I think he is. I honestly do. Uh, I honestly do. Um, I mean, as a man, you, you grow and you live and you go through all these different situations and circumstances, and, and I, I'm sure that he's really learned from this year, and, um, and he's the type to take notes of everything, so... I mean, he'll get it corrected, and he he can switch it up and turn the knob up. What do you see from Jason Garrett that we don't see? Because the media tends to get frustrated by the robotic nature of this guy. Whenever he's in front of a camera, same thing over and over again. Process, process. What what do you see from Jason Garrett that maybe we don't? Well, they do say consistency is a measure of a man's mental toughness. So if you see him doing the same thing over and over, you applaud that man because it's hard to do the same thing over and over, especially in this league. He does a good job of trying to, um, you know, work the small details consistently because those small details make large impacts. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't make that large impact this year, but I think that he has the potential to be as good as he want to be. I mean, he's a great person, you know, and you just got to live and learn from your mistakes, you know, and, and, and grow from them. Uh, you were a defender of Greg Hardy, especially early in the season. Uh, do you think in any way that he wore out his welcome in that locker room this year? Well, I, I wouldn't say. You know, I, I was more so, you know, I didn't look at him like that. He sits right beside me, so right. he's welcomed every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have to deal with him. And being that you have to deal with him, um, I grew accustomed to a, a misunderstood person, and I got to know him a little, a little better than a lot of people did. So, you know. It, it it was tough, you know. It was tough, you know. You got this guy who you wants to be, a, who you want to be a leader, and then you got that guy. You know, it just, it just, it was just too much. Did you see Hardy go through some difficulties though? You know, we we heard about being late to meetings and the fact that some guys were upset about that. Did did you see that kind of tension growing in the locker room? Yeah, it it, it grew, it grew, it definitely grew, and um, I I hate it happened. I mean, you talking about a team that was, you know so close knit and tight and then all of a sudden like it's just different you know and and I wouldn't say he's the you know the reason for that happening you know but sometimes change sometimes if it, if it's, if it ain't broke don't fix it you know what I mean and, and sometimes with change you know the team is different regardless of how you know how great this athlete is regardless of this and that if, if they're not mentally on the same page then you're not gonna get the same result would it be difficult uh, to bring him back again, do you think, and and have a locker room that's as cohesive and together as it needs to be? Yeah, it'll it'll it, it'll be. 
I think it will be good for the younger guys, like, uh, which I don't know how they feel about him personally. I mean, I haven't spoke yeah. to him or asked. But, I mean, it's, it'll, it'll be me or him. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you got to have either or. Like, it's, it's hard to have, you know, two type of line mentality guys in, in one room. So it's, it's tough to figure out, you know, um, who, who the younger guys are going to follow. And, you know, of course they're going to look up to a guy who's a prolific player. But, but I'm a, you know, I just understand the game and I know what it takes to win. Let's talk a little bit about the playoffs that are going on right now. How tough was it to watch Washington play in a playoff game today? It was very tough. <laughs> it was tough because, you know, we could have beat those guys with blinders on. And we just allow opportunity to slip. And um, apparently uh, Washington allowed opportunities to slip today, too. Right. But that could have been us moving forward. So, I mean, it's just one of those things. It is what it is. And it's that's, how the, that's the nature of the business. You got Washington now, or I should say Green Bay at Arizona next week, and Seattle at Carolina. So of that final four, Green Bay and Arizona, Seattle and Carolina, who do you like coming out of the NFC? You had to pin, pick one team. I'm going to tell you all who everybody's sleeping on. It is the Arizona Cardinals because they got a seasoned quarterback. They got a great defense, and they got a very explosive offense. So it's going to be interesting. But my pick personally would be the Carolina Panthers because they're on fire right now. And in the AFC, Kansas City uh, at New England, Pittsburgh at Denver. So KC, New England, Pittsburgh, Denver, who do you like to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl? KC at Denver. That's a loss. KC at New England, Pittsburgh at Denver. Loss for KC. And Pittsburgh, that's a toss-up because Pittsburgh has always been the Patriots' kryptonite. So you got to watch it. It's going to be a tough one to watch. Let's talk about your music a little bit. It's, it's another one of your passions. You have a, a production company, the Cowboys Anthem, kind of picked up some steam during training camp. What, what are your latest projects? What are you working on? Well, I'm working on, actually, uh, my album. And, I, I, I mean, it's a dream of mine. It's always been a dream of mine. It's a passion. I put my heart into everything I, I do. So, I mean, the music is good, and I named the album Well Rounded because it represents me as a person, and it's just a good a good way to you know express myself. We've talked about this before, but w where did your musical interest come from? How did it all start? Man, uh, since childhood. I mean, granny, you know, grand grandma, cousins, family reunions, playing the pianos, and, and uh, writing songs in church, and it just it just stuck with me a, a, a long time, um, and I just consistently did it and just got better and better at over time. Who are you listening to in the car right now when you drive home? Well, I listen to a uh, unmixed song I'm working on. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> listen to your own stuff. Yeah, I was listening to a song I just did like three days ago. So I was just seeing what I can correct. But I was listening to, some, you know, the, the uh, 97.3 or whatever the radio, local radio station is. You know, I got the children in the car, so it's harder to, you know, just listen to what I want to. <laughs> so what should we look for from you here in the, in the near future? Um, well, you should look forward to seeing an a, 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 a older guy prevail, even at 32. I'm talking about a hungry guy. Y'all about to witness the hungriest guy in the NFL right now, period, point blank. Ain't what, no ifs, ands, buts about it. And you still hope it's in Dallas. And I still hope it's in Dallas. Wherever I land, I tell you that much, they got, they got a special guy because um, I don't want to walk away from this game with any regrets. Well, just in case we don't see you at training camp, next year. Here we go. You ready? Well, I, I guess you say what can make me feel this way. My girl. My girl. My girl. Talking about my, my girl. girl. My, my girl. girl. Jeremy Metzi, thank you very much. <laughs> my man. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. All the, every time.